what she's drawing on is that basically what's happened in the past 20 years is what it means to be left wing or radical has been very successfully redefined by the academy, by professors and by grad students. And the way it's been redefined is that starting with a correct premise, which is that class people's economic condition doesn't isn't responsible for everything awful that's happening to them in their lives. There's also the uh, purely uh, racialized oppressions that they face and gendered oppressions that they face. And that, that's absolutely true. Starting with that correct premise, it leads to the, the deeply incorrect conclusion that therefore, if you talk about people's economic conditions, you are not addressing the uh, core and most important aspects and liabilities of their lives. Now, <laughs> if you're an African-American in this country, it's absolutely true that you face all kinds of discrimination. It's absolutely true that you have a much higher uh, uh, likelihood of being incarcerated than a white person in the same class as you. That's, al- that's absolutely true. But how do you expect to address the real plight of African Americans in this country around their everyday lives without a jobs program, without universal health care, without decent and universal public education? To think that these are matters that are by virtue of being economic, not relevant for people of color, it's not just wrong. It is fantastically dishonest. Now, the the reason Hillary is able to get away with this is that the so-called left, and I don't really call it the left anymore. I don't know what to call it because (laughs) it's a diseased formation. The so-called left intelligentsia has succeeded in equating the word class with white guys. Mm. And this is an we should look at this as an achievement because it's never happened on the left before. It was always understood amongst the more savvy, radical activists that even though people's economic conditions don't explain all the liabilities they face, addressing the oppressions that men and women who are poor are facing, that black men and women are facing who are poor, addressing those without addressing their economic conditions is a uh, elite strategy to keep off the table the real concerns of poor working and women, working class black men and women. It's always understood. Now it's taken to be the emblem of what it means to be radical. And that's just an, a, a sign that the middle class and the upper classes have taken over the discourse of the left, whether they're professors, whether they work in nonprofits, or whether they're these uh, talking heads for think tanks. It's the same phenomenon, which is the middle class is getting to define what it means to be radical. That's a that's a really great point, and I think it also, um, you know, the the fact there also does seem to be the strain, and what you just said would explain why the strain of just hatred, and not I mean just like looking down on um, the white working class and poor class, you, you um, and even blaming them for racism. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Go ahead. A lot of this um, race talk is really a a search for an acceptable way to express your disdain for poor people. Mm -hmm. You just can't express it for poor black people because then it becomes racist. And in in polite circles, racism is not acceptable. And that's a great thing. It shouldn't be, of course. But it is acceptable to talk about poor white trash or hillbillies or rednecks. All these are expressions you can continue to use. And uh, people use it with alacrity. Not because they have a hatred for white racists, but there's a general disdain for poor white people. Mm -hmm. And they're seen as being born into racism the way they are born into their skin. This is, again, an achievement (laughs) of a a very, I think, uh, backward and quite uh, conservative uh, intelligentsia now. There's this is all very... um... 